Alright guys, Tash Grab here back again today. I hope you enjoyed your day so far and today we're going to discuss Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War's beta once again. Over the last 24 hours or so it's come out on the other platforms, the PC, the Xbox, the PS4 of course, for the final weekends before the game launches in November. Treyarch have made a number of changes, especially around the slide, which a lot of the pro players seem to be pretty happy with, in addition to how it feels on PC, given the CDL is moving that direction going forwards. However, there still seems to be some broken mechanics in the game, as a number of players have discovered and we'll look at exactly how shots he does this in a couple of minutes time and uh, well I imagine if this stays in the game it certainly is going to be the movement meta and I can't imagine it will because uh, well it's a pretty remarkable thing to witness. Hope you guys enjoy the video, like if you enjoy it, subscribe if you are new as always I'd greatly appreciate it, it really helps out the channel, thank you for doing that. Let's hop into things then, so as uh, Nato says yesterday that Saints Trek never misses, the change to the game are incredible, feels like COD again, the slide mainly, what changes have they made since the last time we played so a number of players really happy with what Trek has done. This is what they come out with, so they add some new maps into the game, they add some new modes into the game, they up the level cap as you can see yesterday, gameplay updates, sliding changes, weapon tuning, duster stock filled mic frag grenade, and agency suppressor tweaks, cross progression enabled, and more. So some really cool changes here, quite frankly. They also add in hard pointed control as you can see, so um, well they're permanently in the beta right now, so that is certainly cool to see. It seems to me that probably control will be the third mode this year, hard point of course, search and destroy, and then control likely to be the third mode, exactly the game mode set we had back in Black Ops 4, which, uh, well, frankly, compared to playing Domination in Modern Warfare, was a pretty reasonable one. And, uh, well, as they say, you know, the visual indicator for Hardpoint, some other cool things that you've seen over the last couple of weeks here. So, gameplay updates. These are some of the big things. Let's look at movement. Reduce the speed of the initial slide impulse and slightly shortened slide duration. So, making it a little bit more like a ghost slide, which a lot of the pros are pretty happy with, because it doesn't necessarily need to be used in the middle of a gunfight, but can be used to get away and get around a corner and, to, you know, duck into cover and that kind of thing which is probably more how it should be used frankly because in previous Call of Duty games especially Black Ops 4 and Modern Warfare the slide is just the mechanic you have to use to get into a gunfight with and if you're not sliding into a gunfight you're probably putting yourself at a disadvantage so um, you know it's nice that that maybe isn't the case anymore. During the PS4 beta we found players over relying on sliding to traverse ground quickly or engage in close quarters making it difficult to target players in the open. Our goal is for sliding to function as a smooth transition to cover, escape or transition to a crouching stance. This this weekend's changes results in a snappier slide that best fit our goals for the mechanic. Slightly reduced slide speed with the duster stock attachment equipped. You'll have seen the crazy clips we went over though over this last week, right? Of Crim6 especially, and others using the duster stock to great effect, just absolutely flying around the map with it. And that was certainly taking things one step too far. With this new change, duster stock now offers a modest improvement in slide speed that is more balanced with the other attachment offering. So it's still certainly an improvement. And, um, you know, there were certainly some questions as to whether duster stock from Aix especially should actually be allowed to, well, have an increased slide speed, right? Maybe you allow it instead to enable you to drop shot more efficiently without having to put your you know, hand on the floor or whatever, or get up quicker or something like that. That isn't necessarily increasing slide speed, because sliding is such an important mechanic, especially for competitive and professional play, that I imagine all the players are still going to be trying to rock this on their SMGs if they can. Then, of course, they do some weapon at changes. So the Milano 821, that's effectively the, the Uzi. People have considered that the best gun in the game from, um, well, early on it was the AK-74U, people were looking at, then people discovered that kind of the Milano is probably the best gun in the game, but they reduced the damage fall off range. This update causes the 4 hit kill range to turn to 5 hits at 12.8 meters down from 19.2 meters during the beta on PS4, which is a pretty significant change. I'm not exactly sure if it is considered the best SMG in the more. Probably not. Probably the AK-74U or the MP5 are now back right up there again. The AK-47 as well slightly reduced recall. M16 increased time between bursts just about. Type 63 reduced recall. Not really too many guns that are going to be super relevant for competitive play. Then the field mic, frag grenade, etc. So definitely some other changes, but really the main ones being in terms of the sliding and also the Milano, right? Because this was the gun that people were considering, okay, it's going to dominate the meta. Honestly, the ARs in the game right now, like the XM4, for example, the Commando from Black Ops 1, haven't been too effective, right? And most players have been running around with the 74U, the MP5 at times, and the Milano have definitely been the dominant weapons over the first couple of weekends. However, what we're going to look at now is just a short little clip I saw on Reddit yesterday of people explaining how you 
can do this new movement mechanic because regardless of them trying to improve the slider make it so that you actually it is only used to transition to cover there seems to be a little bit of a glitch going on where if you slide and then jump and then slide again which is kind of the, the glitch movement we saw a few days ago you could absolutely go flying right now they seem to have fixed that if you jump slide jump slide you just slow down and your momentum exactly ceases however it seems like if you slide then jump and then do a 180 in midair your momentum will actually continue if you then do a backwards slide and then as soon as you've completed the backwards slide you jump up turn around again and continue sliding once again so effectively it's um it's just like that crazy clip we saw a few days ago but instead of doing it uh, well easily and consistently you have to do a 360 effectively every couple of slides you do which isn't necessarily super practical but um yeah at the end of the day it's probably going to be the movement meta especially at the start of S&D rounds for example or hard point games when you know there's no one about so I'll share this clip real quick you slide it and then you turn around and just keep on clicking R3 you can basically move like at the speed of light like this shit's fast once you get the hang of it it's really like easy but yeah it's basically you just spin around in circles sliding it's like a constant slide. So of course, if there's one guy who was going to use it to his maximum capability, that was going to be Shotzi. And as he says right here, jump slide, 360 jump slide. And as you can see him doing, let's just uh, well, look through this again on Moscow right here. Of course, he's sliding, ledge sliding of all the things. So he knows there's no one about. He goes for a slide. He has his nade out as well at the same time. So maybe that's necessary to help with the movement. So um, yeah, I guess replicate what Shotzi does and you'll be able to do this as well. I mean, the movement that he pulls on display you know, on a regular basis is absolutely remarkable. And uh, well, I'll put this on full screen for you guys to enjoy. So despite that broken movement mechanic still being in the game and Shotzi of course knowing exactly what he's doing, I imagine Trek will well, have to figure out a way to deal with this, right? Because if that's the case, and at the start of all the S&D rounds and all the hardpoint games, people are just going to be doing this, it's not going to be a great gameplay experience, right? Because in all games in the past, we've seen some sort of movement mechanic which makes you move quicker. Pretty much like every game has had it, apart from maybe World War II, at least like the more recent Call of Duties, there's been a way that you can like do your sliding. So, you know, for example, in Infinite Warfare, it was like the little slide and then jumps, so you slid and then jumped, and then it like gave you a little bit of momentum boost, and people figured out ways to do it pretty much in all games that gave you some sort of speed boost generally involving the slides so in this game it seems like this might be the way to do it and um right now it's kind of ugly right and i hope it doesn't stay in the game in this format but for now it seems to be possible but as ache says did they get rid of skill based matchmaking or with the slide nerf is it just that noticeable right so the slide nerf is nerfing all these uh, all these kids that ache is playing in these lobbies which are trying to get cracked out and um you know as ache says powerpoint slide one ticked off we, we went through the powerpoint the other day like 13 pages or something of what ache was uh, well hoping for the game as merc then says Feels and looks fantastic on PC. Love the gunfights. Field mics need a shorter duration. Stim needs to be one use per life. Having trouble seeing character models could be getting old. Also, the stim and field mic issue probably won't be a problem for the CDL. Engineer is a must to take care of the field mics on the map, at least, you know, outside of the CDL. Would also love the ability to bunny hop in gunfights. I know the reason on limiting drop shots is to handle snaking, which I have no problem with. So, interesting discussion here, quite frankly. You know, bunny hopping in fights or, you know, enabling jump shotting to be more effective than it is in the game right now could improve something but maybe you guys do prefer the more traditional movement that we are now starting to see in black ops cold war with the exception of course of this slide we just looked at over the last couple of minutes here zed says as well cold war on p feels like a totally different version on the game on ps4 unreal so yeah i imagine this is in the positive sense and yes the cdl guys are all going to be playing on pc with a controller in their back pocket this year so it's um well it's certainly cool to see that it actually feels really good on pc at least uh, based on what merc and some others are saying zaptia says as well i'm actually in love with the way Cold War feels so hyped for this year so a number of people saying the game feels much much better than it you know right now than it did at the alpha a few weeks ago so certainly good to see but um yeah still some broken things in the game as I'm sure we are all accustomed to right now just to finish off the video this from GG Breaking Point I thought it was relevant that we were talking about Black Ops Cold War Trek brought us zombies competitive viability ranked play Mason's numbers are much more how would you rank Trek's Call of Duty games from 1 to 5 interesting question I never got to play World at War so I'm not even going to include that in my rankings for me it would probably go Black Ops 2, I think that's a no-brainer. Then Black Ops 3, I had so much fun on that game, but it probably wasn't quite as good fundamentally. Honestly, these two could go either way. Like, I probably had more fun playing Black Ops 3 than I did Black Ops 2, probably just because I was a bit better at the game when it got to uh, when Black Ops 3 started to come out. Then probably Black Ops 1, and then Black Ops 4, I would say. I wasn't really a massive fan of Black Ops 4, but um, yeah, it was still up there in my favourite CODs ever, because I'm a bit of a track fanboy, quite frankly. But 
they're not quite as good as the Core 3, in my opinion, and well, who knows where Black Ops Cold War will fit amongst these over coming years. Thank you for watching the video as always. If you did enjoy it or learned something new, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. Really helps out the YouTube algorithm though. You enjoyed this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well. Thank you for watching as always, and I will see you next time.